Okay, so most beginning algebra students will make this very common error. So let's see how much algebra you actually know and go ahead and solve this inequality right here. Uh, the question is negative 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 9. So solve this and also graph the solution as well. All right, so if you can do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Of course, you can't put your graph into the comment section, but you can still write it down. I'll show you both the solution and the respective graph in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now before I show you the answer, what do you think this error is? Now, if you think you have an idea of what the actual mistake, the mistake is, this common error, well, put that into the comment section. Of course, I'm going to show you that in just one second. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is x is less than or equal to negative 4. And the respective graph would be basically this. You have a number line. Here's 0. Here's negative 4. And we have a, an arrow going to the left. Uh, with a circle that is filled in. Something like this. You could also, instead of this circle, you could have a graph like this with a little uh, bracket going this way. Uh, but I think this notation is far more common. So either one of those notations would be, uh, would be correct. And if you got this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, I have to give you a nice little happy face and A+, plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you could tell your friends and family that indeed you are a professional expert certified in area of solving basic linear inequalities. And that's what we're dealing with here. This is what we call a uh, uh, linear inequality. And it's linear because we're not dealing with a quadratic situation or something else. And it's linear. We're dealing with just one variable linear equations or linear uh, inequalities, excuse me. And you got to know how to deal with inequalities if you expect to be successful in algebra. Now, if you are lost or if you didn't get this uh, right, this is not that difficult. But we do have to establish some really important concepts about inequality. So let's go and get started right now. Okay, so first things first, here is our problem. And we want to solve this problem. Now, there's going to be a graph and a solution to this. Matter of fact, we just uh, saw the answer right here. But before we uh, you know, get into this problem, or actual problem, let's take a look at a simpler situation, something like this. X is greater than 9. Okay, so what does this problem mean? Well, uh, X represents what? That's just a variable. X represents some value, some number. So some number is greater than 9. So what is the solution to this inequality? Now, if you're saying, hmm, let me see here. Some number is greater than 9. Uh, maybe the answer for x, uh, maybe x is equal to 10, right? Because 10 is greater than 9. Well, 10 indeed is greater than 9, so this is true. So x is good. I mean, x is equal to 10 is a good uh, solution. But is that the only solution? Well, no, right? 11 is also greater than 9. 12 is greater than 9. And we can go on and on and on. Matter of fact, how many numbers are greater than 9? An infinite amount of numbers is greater than 9. So therefore, when we talk about inequalities, we like to express the solution uh, to inequalities as a solution set. In other words, a set of numbers that make this inequality, uh, this statement true. Right. So we can kind of uh, express this. Oh, there's different ways you can do it. A typical way is using a real number line. Let's put 0 right here. Let's put 9 right here. And we just uh, said all numbers that are greater than 9 make this true. So all the numbers going this way. So graphically, uh, the way you express this, typically, okay, I keep using these adjectives and whatnot, uh, you make an, a number line and then you put an open circle at 9 and then you draw an arrow. Now the arrow is going towards all the numbers that make this true. So in other words, like 10, 11, etc. So what all the numbers that are underneath this arrow are part of the solution set, which of course is infinite. Now this circle right here is open. This is a very important detail. This is an open circle. 
indicating that nine, the number nine in and of itself is not a solution because if we go nine is greater than nine, is this true? No, nine is not greater than nine, okay? So therefore we have to keep that uh, circle open, meaning again, nine is not part of the solution set. Now this all changes if the problem is this, x is greater than or equal to nine. If that's the case, then we're gonna go ahead and close in this circle, which indicates that nine is a part of the solution set. Okay, so in other words, is nine greater than or equal to nine? Yes, it is. Okay, so this is just a quick example of a basic linear in, uh, uh, inequality. Now, before you start to really get into inequalities in algebra, you need to know how to solve equations and there's different types of inequalities. You can have uh, very simple linear inequalities like this, and then you can get into more interesting stuff like compound inequalities that have to deal with and statements and or statements where the graphs kind of look like this. They could be like this or they could be like so. So, you know, this is a big topic and one that you definitely need to know. And then it gets even better when you get into uh, systems or not systems. You could have systems of inequalities as well, but graphing two variable linear, linear inequalities because then you're dealing with solution regions, et cetera, et cetera. So a big topic. So don't feel bad if you, um, you know, are a little bit uh, lost. Okay. You can definitely learn this stuff, but we have to start with the basics. So this is the basics. The main idea here is that uh, inequalities will always have more than just one simple solution. They always have an infinite amount, so we like to graph them. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at another example, and that would be this uh, example right here. Let me uh, erase this so we can focus in. So what is this saying? Okay, well, this, say, this is saying uh, numbers x, okay, x represents uh, numbers, right? So this is saying like two things in once. It's saying all numbers that are greater than or equal to three, but at the same time, less than 10. All right, so this is what we call a compound inequality. But what do you think the graph might look like here? Well, you should have enough knowledge to build this graph based upon what I just told you. So we'll, well, let me, let me kind of erase all this right here so we can have a little bit more room. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a number line and we'll put three here and 10 here. So what do you think the graph's gonna look like? Okay, so think about open circles, closed circles, and where all the values are that make this true. Okay, so the way you do this is uh, we're gonna go ahead and just put these two numbers on our real number line. We'll put two circles here for the time being. And where are the numbers that make this true? Well, one number that makes this true is seven, right? Seven is greater than or equal to three, and at the same time, less than 10. So uh, all these numbers right here are part of the solution set. But let's notice that right here on this symbol, this is less than or equal to, so three is included in the, uh, this uh, solution set, so we have to close that circle. 10 is not. All right, so this is an illustration of an and statement, an and compound inequality, because when we state this, what are we saying? Uh, X is greater than, uh, great, X is greater than, or equal to three and at the same time, uh, less than 10. So this is an and statement. And when you're dealing with and compound statements, I always like to teach this, when you hear the word and, think of hand like a handlebar on a bike. Okay, here's my little lovely bike here. Of course, it's kind of turning <laughs> a corner or something like that. But anyways, there's all these little mnemonics and stuff. So hopefully you understand you know, everything I'm talking about here. So let's get into our actual problems. So this is just kind of a little bit of an intro on some of these concepts. So as I indicated, before you really get into solving inequalities, you need to know how to solve basic algebraic equations. So the way you want to approach this problem, and of course we have an inequality symbol right here, but temporarily think of this, kind of block this out in your head mentally, and just put an equal sign there. Okay, so in other words, if this was this, okay, if this was an equation like so, what would be the steps you would take to solve for x? Those are effectively the same steps. So in this case, let's go ahead and take these steps. Uh, so we're going to have to first subtract one from both sides of the equation. Now, if you don't understand what I'm doing, and let me just go ahead and tell you right now, 
uh, you can find all this material, my best full instruction, in either my pre-algebra class or my algebra one uh, course. Uh, you can find links to those in the description uh, of this video. Uh, but if you just want to check out more of my YouTube videos, I have tons of videos on inequalities as, as well. But if you are struggling, you really kind of need a, a good kind of formal approach to learn all this material in order. You just don't want to do a little bit of this or a little bit of that, etc. And make sure you, again, you need to uh, uh, verify or ensure that you know how to solve equations first before you get into inequalities. Okay, so let's get back to this problem. So the first thing we need to do is subtract 1 from both sides of the equation, and then we're going to add down in a column manner. So negative 2x plus nothing is negative 2x plus 1 minus 1 is 0. We don't need to write that. 9 minus 1 is 8. All right, so hopefully you're with me. And what do you think the next step is here? Uh, if, we're, again, remember we're kind of thinking in our mind's eye that this is an equation. So you might be thinking, all right, negative 2x is equal to 8. What would I do if I had this situation? Well, if you're... Uh, Looking at that, you're saying, all right, what would I do here? Would I divide both sides of the equation by negative 2? You would be absolutely correct, okay? All right, so some of you are saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you promised me that there was an error here. You're not showing me anything. This looks pretty simple. Well, we're going to get to that error uh, very shortly, okay? All right, so what do you think the result of doing this is? Okay, so we have negative 2x is greater than, or sorry, negative 2x divided by negative 2, all right, and then of course we have greater than or equal to 8 divided by negative 2. So what is the next step after this? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, so uh, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by negative 2. Makes sense, just like if we're going to solve for x. But here is this mistake, okay? Super common. What you have to do when you are dividing or multiplying both sides of an inequality by a negative number okay you must flip the inequality symbol all right and people students forget to do this all the time all right especially uh, those that are just beginning to learn algebra you have to remember this little step again if you're dividing both sides of, the, of an inequality or multiplying both sides of an inequality by a negative value you need to flip the inequality at that step so instead of greater than or equal to this is going to become less than or equal to all right so negative 2 divided by negative 2 is x now again we're going to flip the inequality to less than or equal to and this is 8 greater than negative 2 which of course is negative 4 and there you go so this is the correct answer so uh, what you should have put into the comment section is uh, all numbers x that are less than or equal to negative 4. now for the most part this um, uh, answer right here would suffice, but you need to be able to come up with the graph. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph for this respective problem. But first, let me show you this, which is, hey, can you hit that subscribe button? If you got a little value out of this video, if you're saying, hey, thanks, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I already knew that mistake, but I just wanted to just verify that I understood inequalities. Or maybe you're saying, wow, I didn't really know that. And uh, if you're going to be going into a test or exam, maybe uh, tomorrow and you're looking at this video to study, well, if it helped you out, well, that's the whole idea behind my videos is to help people out. But I need your support to continue to grow my channel. So the best way to do that is simply hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, you might as well hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Thank you very much. Matter of fact, this is the way I look. And let's move on and finish this prom up. Okay, so here is our final answer. X is less than or equal to negative 4. And now that you understand how to graph... Uh, this uh, the solutions to linear inequalities we're going to draw our lovely little real number line just plot this number right here negative four uh, leave it as an open circle and then just think about this right here be like okay this is less than what numbers are less than negative four well the numbers in this direction are less than negative four okay so in other words negative five is negative five less than negative four Yes, indeed it is, right? Uh, what would you rather have in debt? Would you rather be in debt negative $5 or negative $4, okay? Which is a better financial situation? Hey, I'd rather just have $4 of debt, not $5 of debt, because $5 means you have even less money, right? So remember, negative values, the numbers decrease this way. Sometimes students get a little confused about that, but verify, just pick a sample number, something that you know 
is true. Like, okay, maybe negative 10, oh, negative 10, whatever. Where is it located? So as long as it's a true statement, then that all these numbers in this direction are true. And you'll get more comfortable with this as you work with inequalities. Okay, so again, if you need more help with inequalities, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel, but uh, you got to make sure you understand how to work with the equations. And this is just the beginning of all the fun you'll have with inequalities. Again, you have linear inequalities, compound inequalities, two variable uh, linear um, inequalities, and then you got systems of inequalities, and then you got quadratic inequalities. It goes on and on and on. So just look at all this fun stuff you have to, <laughs> to look forward to. But uh, anyways, so hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.